Coming to the stage next, a uh, wonderful human being, great friend of mine. He recently started doing comedy, and tonight he's quitting. No, tonight is, uh, <laughs> what is this, your fourth, fifth time? I think fourth time. Fourth time, yeah, fourth time, and three of them were here, so he's a legend of these around these parts. <laughs> Give it up for Mr. Brian Hogan, everybody. Yeah. Can I shake your hand? Oh, shit. Wow. <laughs> Everybody's been awesome tonight up here, and now it's my turn, so just go have a cigarette or hook up in the bathroom or do some coke. Feel free. <laughs> Joe Pontillo, great guy, I guess. Uh, <laughs> does anyone who deserves all the fame and fortune that showbiz has to offer, it's unfortunately Joe Pontillo. Joe Pontillo, everybody. Uh, actually, I am, yeah, you're right, I'm an amateur. Uh, I am not an actual comedian. I'm not licensed. I am not certified to dispense comedy or handle comedic material. So joking a lot of trouble for letting me up uh, up here on on stage or on the corner. I guess you can get flogged with a uh, rubber chicken in the basement of uh, the Friars Club or something. But that joke sounds so much more funny. <laughs> Everything failed in my life. Uh, I like my liver. I think my liver's here. Uh, I'm single. I know ladies, believe it or not. Uh, you know, when I was a little skinny, I used to be Mr. Right to some girl, and then uh, occasionally I'd be Mr. Right now, and I got a little fatter, and now I'm Mr. Maybe Later? <laughs> if I'm really drunk, or if I'm like, if, you know, in a coma, the term brain death, you know, have at me. <laughs> but, uh, I've been, trying to, I've been trying to meet girls in bars. My mother and father met in a bar. Maybe that's why I'm an alcoholic. Uh, my, uh, my alcoholism is going seven years strong now. I don't know, no, one's, no one gives you a, a coin for that, but uh, you get enough buybacks, I guess. Uh, I am so nervous right now. <laughs> this is uncomfortable. Oh my God. But, uh, Every now and then, I'll actually strike up a conversation with, with a single woman. I'm pretty sure she's a woman at, at, at a bar. And, uh, you know, we have a conversation, I'll buy her a drink, and just as I'm about to get her number, all of a sudden, like, five or six of her girlfriends just swoop in and just form, like, a bitchy, cock-blocking, wagon-circling force field around her. And I never get to talk to her again. <laughs> Where they turn into like, you know, like they transform into robots called cock block decons. <laughs> or and then they form up into an even bigger, bitchier robot called, you know, cock block to kiss. <laughs> Whatever the fuck. They just shoot lasers and rockets, make all the single guys buy him a drink in the bar. You know. But uh, you know, I think I'm trying to do that for the past couple years, I've come to two conclusions. First off, bars. The only purpose of bars is to go there and drink alone. <laughs> quietly and miserably. Second off, if you don't meet someone in college or high school, odds are, single folks, you're gonna die alone. <laughs> That's the punchline, you're gonna die alone. <laughs> Fucking alone. <laughs> you know, cause, cause true love, true love, ladies and gentlemen, it's like, it's a, it's a once in a lifetime, twice in a lifetime if you're lucky thing. It's a limited time offer. It's like Haley's Comet or, or the, the McRib. <laughs> You gotta seize upon that, like, <laughs> get the chance, otherwise, it's gone. <laughs> oh, shit, I didn't do my face-off thing. My face-off joke. Face-off joke, pretty much, this is summed up in like three seconds. <gasps> they took my face! <laughs> and then Cher slaps them to snap out of it, and then they go look for Thomas Jefferson's macaroni and cheese recipe or something. I don't know. That was a National Treasure reference. Really good movie. <laughs> Never go off. Never go off schedule. Oh, it's been <laughs> Jew joke, gay joke, Jew joke. Uh, just kidding, Jews and gays. All right. Um, the true love. All right. But anyway, I mean, what do what lonely people, what do lonely guys do? Like, what I've learned from Meg Ryan movies is lonely women, like, they collect cats or something, you know? So I, I can't be a grown, lonely guy and collect cats, because I've learned from Julia Roberts' movies that that means you're gay. So I think uh, the manliest thing to do if you're a lonely guy is collect a pigeon coop. And they're a pigeon coop and it's great. My peas are really coming out here, sorry. Uh, but just like, you can categorize your friends, you can name them. 
after like, I don't know, Star Wars characters or the starting lineup of the 86 Mets or something equally pathetic. <laughs> and you can just uh, let them out every once in a while. And you can just go, hey, come here, little Boba Fett. Here, go off and fly. <laughs> That's my flying sound effects. You're gonna come back, right? He's gonna come back. I trained him, right? <laughs> You're gonna come back. <laughs> He's gonna come back. <laughs> but that's the only purpose of like a marriage. I think all the romantic stuff is, is out of my head at this point. I'm, I'm 34 years old, 34 years young, packing a little extra pounds. But um, but I honestly think you know, like you just don't wanna don't wanna be alone. That's probably why the reason you get married. So uh, that's why why not let the gay folk marry? Why not let gay people marry? Come on, Christian right? Because you're depriving America of a lot of fun. Because uh, if you have gay marriage, inevitably you'll have the product of gay divorce. If you have gay divorce, you will inevitably have gay divorce court, which will probably be the most entertaining half hour of television since Golden Girls or America's Most Wanted. <laughs> ah, okay, imagine the, the fierce custody battles over the French poodle, the Lady Gaga discography. It would be epic. But, uh... Oh man, where's my send off? I've been up here like a half hour already. All right. Oh shit, did I do everything? This is it? Holy fuck, all right, oh. Alphabet cereal. I gotta share this with you, alphabet cereal? I don't like it one alphabet, and I'll tell you why. I don't want some breakfast cereal, some fucking breakfast cereal, potentially putting words in my mouth. I'm sorry, I'm just to love for Kirsten. <laughs> putting words in my mouth. Oh, cereal. Bullshit. <laughs> Breakfast, anyway. That's all. Um, and also, I, I need, a, need to watch more Fox News. Fox News is hilarious. It's like the Onion News all day, 24 hours a day. And I want the Fox Weather Channel. Because the Fox Weather Channel would be amazing. It would be like any bad weather, it would be liberal Democrats' fault. And then any good weather would happen, it would be like Jesus's, you know, Jesus' accomplishment or the ghost of Ronald Reagan doing like trickle down magical warm winter weather for you. Not that global warming bullshit, no have you believe. Uh, one last thing I have to tell you, I was actually watching, I watch TV for a living, believe it or not. That's why I have this awesome physique. I just sit on my ass <laughs> seven hours a day watching TV. But I have to say, um, I give you like that, that Christian, child world thing and it's like you know for only a dollar a day little pablo here can eat go to school get a degree in law and i hear it enough and all of a sudden I hear, you know instead of you brian hogan spending like what ten dollars a day and a pack of cigarettes another five dollars feeding your fat fucking face on mcdonald's you fat fuck well help this little poor child here you're gonna be dead a year anyway from a coronary why don't you do something good with your life before you head out of here so, that was more sad than funny. <laughs> you know, when you're drunk and you're, you're, you're pitching this stuff at the mirror, stark naked, it's, it's comic gold. <laughs> Apparently you people don't know when you have it, so. But I think I've tortured you enough. Let's get a real comedian back up on here. Thank you very much. God bless you all. Happy New Year. Joe Pontillo. Thank you, Joe. Get in there, Brian. <laughs> it's not a Brian Hogan set unless he breaks down and starts crying halfway. <laughs> what that's about. But good job, Brian. Thank you for coming. And thanks to you guys for supporting him, because without you, this place would like be these seven people and those <laughs> women who weren't even here for the show, but now they're like trapped. Ha <laughs> ha!